about a year ago, I was at the same spot uh, recording my, my first video project for Pedal Powered Anthropology. And where I am is more or less the location where a pivotal moment, a pivotal event um, in the time period leading up to the American Revolutionary War occurred. For a little bit of backstory before I get into it, toward the tail end of the 18th century, the British government was enacting more taxes and tariffs and restrictions and things on the American colonies, which, needless to say, uh, the American colonists weren't entirely thrilled about. And there was growing revolutionary sentiment in the colonies largely because of this. I mean, these are people who have lived in the colonies their entire lives. Their parents lived in the colonies their entire lives. Their grandparents had lived in the colonies their entire lives. I mean, these are, these are people who for generations hadn't even necessarily ever been over to Britain. And they, they felt that it was sort of an overstepping of the boundaries of the British government to be taxing them more and more. They have their own economies and they have their own militias and they sort of have their own thing going on. They don't really need um, British protection. They don't really need goods from Britain so much. They're sort of self-sustaining. And um, they didn't really feel like they were getting a lot out of being a satellite of Britain. So in the wake of these tariffs, there was sort of an increase in agitation against the British government. And in 1770, these tensions that were, that were building in, in response to the, the increased taxes and tariffs sort of came to a head up in Boston when American colonists clashed with British military. And a bunch of people got killed. A man named Christus Attucks became the first man killed in what would wind up being the American Revolution. He was an African-American man. And the newspapers in Boston were sympathetic to the revolutionaries. And they presented the Boston Massacre as sort of an unprovoked attack by the British military on the American colonists. And it was a bit of spin. I mean, it wasn't entirely unprovoked. They probably didn't deserve to get shot. Um, but there were still a bunch of American colonists killed by British military. And spin or not, it worked. And it really, things really got very tense after that. And um, British government sort of eased off a little bit. Um, they scaled back their enforcement of the new taxes and tariffs, and things sort of settled down a bit. But those revolutionary agitants, agitators, didn't really want things to settle down. They weren't happy about that. I mean, they were happy that they weren't getting shot anymore, but they wanted sentiment to move so much in their favor that people would want to revolt. They would want to separate from the British government. And so, after the British government sort of eased off and chilled out a bit, they were looking for any excuse to agitate. And one such, one such opportunity came up about a half mile out on the bay behind me on the evening of June 9th, 1772. So about two years after the Boston Massacre. And the scene that played out behind me a couple hundred years ago, um, was that of a British naval customs schooner called the HMS Gatsby um, pursuing a packet boat called the Hannah. And just for context, they're both wooden sailing vessels, um, different size. They both kind of more or less look like pirate ships. Just uh, the schooner's huge, big wooden, wooden hull, multi-masted um, ship, naval vessel, whereas the, the Hannah was a packet boat, smaller wooden hulled boat. Hannah was used to transport things like the mail or local cargo or things like smuggled rum. And the Gatsby, being a customs schooner looking to enforce the Navigation Act, was in pursuit of the Hannah, hoping to find some smuggled goods aboard. So they were in pursuit out on the water behind me. Hannah, being a much smaller vessel, could go into much shallower water, which they did. And the Gatsby pursued them. And the Hannah was able to get through the shallower water. The Gatsby wasn't, and it ran aground. Now, the Hannah got away. The crew of the Gatsby wasn't entirely worried. Uh, they knew that tide was low right now. Eventually the tide's gonna come in. A few hours they can just sail on out. Of it. Well, those agitators that I mentioned, those revolutionaries, they had a different idea. And a group of Rhode Islanders, led by a man named Abraham Whipple. Now Abraham Whipple was a prominent Rhode Islander at the time. He'd go on to ri rise through the ranks of the Continental Navy throughout the American Revolution. After the American Revolution, he'd become one of the first people uh, to unfurl the American flag on British soil, so that's pretty cool. 
Uh, later in life, he went on to found Marietta, Ohio, and he's actually buried there. But around the state, you'll see a lot of streets named Whipple Street. Um, those are all named after him. And I'm pretty sure it's something like every municipality in Rhode Island has a Whipple Street. So while you're out riding or out walking or out driving or however you get around, keep an eye out for Whipple Street. That Whipple Street is talking about one of the guys that, that led what would become the Gatsby Affair. Um, his name pops up a lot in sort of contemporary cemeteries. Uh, those, are, those are his family, but he's buried out in Marietta, Ohio. Now, Whipple, along with a guy named John Brown, which is a name you probably almost certainly know. Um, you might know it from the raid on Harpers Ferry. That was a bit later leading up to the Civil War. Um, different John Brown, equally rambunctious, different pivotal moment in American and sort of world history. But critical difference, Harpers Ferry John Brown was an abolitionist. He believed that he had been called by God to begin to put an end to slavery. He didn't live to see it, but it can be argued that he succeeded. Now, Revolutionary War era John Brown, he was real mad about all of these taxes and tariffs and restrictions because he was a slave trader. He really rose to prominence through the slave trade. So, sort of equally rambunctious guys, I'm a bit bigger fan of Civil War era John Brown personally. There's something to be said also about being a victim of your time. Yes. Revolutionary War era John Brown lived in a time where slavery was much more rampant, much more common, uh, much more status quo. But yes, while he was a victim of his time, he was also a product of his culture. And it's way too limited to just say that someone was a victim of their time. Everybody had slaves. Everybody was a slave trader. His own brother Moses, with whom he went on to found Brown University in Providence, would go on later in life to become a staunch abolitionist, and they kind of had a falling out because of that. So he was as much a victim of his time as Moses was of his. These sentiments still exist. Rhode Island was actually the first to enact anti-slavery laws in America and that was in the middle of the 17th century. So it was over 100 years before the Gatsby Affair. So abolitionist sentiment did exist. So yeah, you can't really judge him from a 21st century lens, but don't let him off the hook completely. Uh, he was a freedom fighter, sure, but he was interested in his own freedom. And his frustration with the British government imposing taxes and restrictions on the trade of slaves, it sounds like a good thing, restrictions on slavery. But keep in mind that the British government was fine with the trade of slaves and the transport of slaves. They were fine with sailing over to Africa and um, murdering and kidnapping people and bringing them back and enslaving them and breeding them and selling them and trading them. No problem with that, they just wanted to make more money from it. So John Brown and the British government both wanting to make more money off of the slave trade, different sides of the same horrible coin. But anyway, back to the Gatsby Affair. John Brown and Abraham Whipple led a group of revolutionaries called the Sons of Liberty out onto Narragansett Bay behind me, about a half mile out, where they, they rode out to the Gatsby, and they attacked it, they boarded it, they looted it, and then they torched it. And this became known as the Gatsby Affair, and it the Gatsby became the first British naval vessel to be sunk in the American Revolution. It sort of really rekindled those tensions. After the Boston Massacre, like I mentioned, things sort of, the, the British government backed off. The Sons of Liberty and, and the, the revolutionary groups, they didn't want the tensions to back off. They knew that the, the British were gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and they'd sort of move 10 steps forward and then three back. And they felt that the, the new normal would become more and more extreme. So with events like the Gatsby Affair, or the Liberty in Newport, or the burning of the British tea in Providence, there was, there was also sort of a, a Providence Tea Party. Um, these were all events that directly precipitated the American Revolutionary War. And they're not all very well known. I mean, my family moved here in 1989. I was six years old. Um, I remember in first grade learning about the Boston Tea Party. They let a, left out a lot of the nitty gritty details, but you learn about it in first grade. I learned about the Boston Massacre in probably sixth or seventh grade, I don't specifically remember. Never heard about the Gatsby in, in school, never, not once. And it wasn't until probably like 2006 that I did hear about it. And even, even within, within Rhode Island, people aren't necessarily aware of it. I'm in the village of Patuxent right now and they're really proud of it and they're really excited about it. But as you go further and further out from Patuxent, 
you don't really hear as much about it. And I kind of hope that starts to change because Gatsby is a really important event. Um, every year, there's a, a sort of festival called the Gatsby Days Festival, the Gatsby Days Celebration, and um, it's sort of a revolutionary era fair where there are reenactors, there are sort of military encampments with people reenacting different um, militias and different regiments. There are people that make colonial era crafts, selling selling things and giving demonstrations on how they do it. And sort of the culmination, the, the crescendo of the weekend, they send out an effigy of the Gatsby, and they douse it with gas, and they fire off a cannon. The, the cannonball doesn't really come out of it. Nobody, nobody gets, gets killed in this. Um, but they fire off a cannon, and they light the Gatsby, and they, they burn an effigy of the Gatsby to sort of celebrate the sort of understated, um, a critical role in America's war for independence that really started right here. And it's so almost baffling to me that people don't know about this stuff. But I guarantee you, wherever you are, um, if you just head out and look around, you don't have to scratch the surface very, very deeply to learn about some kind of likely really significant event that occurred right around you. You might live in a town that you think is stupid and nothing happened, but just head out. Things don't have to, they don't have, like this is New England. You don't, you're not necessarily going to have American Revolution history if you're outside of New England, but something is there. There were people here before Europeans came to America, all across the country, all across the continent. So you can head out and find memorials or marker stones commemorating something that happened. You can even look at street signs, like I mentioned Whipple Streets. Um, street signs that seem like maybe they're named after a name rather than being like Oaklawn or something like that, those might have a story behind them. So no matter where it is that you live, you can head out and find your own sort of equivalent of the Gatsby Affair. And if you do, if you go and you research it, and, and if this video led you to find out something about where you live, reach out and tell me about it, because that's, that's what I hope to do with this. Um, that's about it, as far as the Gatsby Affair is concerned. If you like the video, click like. If you want to know more about what I'm up to, you can head over to facebook.com slash anthrospin, and that's where all of my updates get posted. You can follow me on Instagram at anthrospin, or Twitter at anthrospin, and uh, definitely subscribe to this channel, because... I go in and out of things, but I post things pretty frequently when I'm posting, so you'll want to follow me wherever you can so you don't miss anything, and if you have any questions or comments or uh, things you think I should have added or whatever, share them in the comments. Um, everybody should know about all of this stuff, and in this 10 minute or so video, there's no way that I could have included all that should have been included, so I'm, I'm, always, I'm always open to uh, more input and more content.